Fighter jets are the most lethal and advanced war machine ever created by man. We are talking about aerial beasts composed of more than 5 million parts, capable of exceeding 2,000 kilometers per hour, and equipped with an arsenal so devastating that it could wipe out an entire city in a matter of seconds. But have you ever wondered how these colossi of the air are manufactured? How is it possible to build an aircraft that seems designed by extraterrestrial intelligence? Well. Today we will travel directly to Texas, United States, home to the largest production plant for the F-35 Lightning II, where more than 5,000 engineers, technicians, and state-of-the-art robots work tirelessly to manufacture one of the most lethal fighter jets of all time. So get ready, because you are about to discover how one of the planet's most impressive war machines is mass-produced. Let's start! Step 1. Design and Development It all begins long before a single part arrives at the assembly hangar. At the Lockheed Martin Development Centers, more than 3,000 specialists dedicate years to designing the F-35 Lightning II. The goal is extreme – to build a stealth, supersonic, lethal, and practically undetectable fighter jet, a machine capable of infiltrating enemy territory, launching its attack, and disappearing without a trace – literally, a ghost of the skies. With advanced 3D design programs, every detail is calculated to the millimeter, from the angles of the fuselage designed to deflect radar waves to the precise location of the internal compartments that will house missiles and guided bombs, all hidden to maintain its invisible silhouette. The most impressive part is that before even building a single physical component, the F-35 has already been combat-tested millions of times in virtual simulations. This inferno of testing can last over a decade and has cost more than $60 billion in development and engineering alone. Only when the entire system passes all digital tests does Lockheed Martin give the green light. Step 2. Manufacturing of external parts With the design approved, the most spectacular part begins transforming digital blueprints into real parts. Daily, specialized trucks arrive at the plant loaded with tons of aerospace aluminum, military-grade titanium, and stealth composites, materials so advanced that some are classified by the Department of Defense. The first components are the wings, which are an example of extreme engineering. They must not only carry weaponry and fuel, but also hide sensors, resist impacts, and maintain radar invisibility. To shape them, enormous blocks of titanium and aluminum sheets are molded in gigantic hydraulic presses that apply more than a thousand tons of pressure. This work, combined with ultra-resistant carbon fiber panels, creates a structure that is light, tough, and surprisingly agile, allowing the F-35 to reach speeds exceeding 1,900 kilometers per hour. Finally, the three sections of the fuselage – cockpit, central core, and aft section – are assembled each incorporating stealth coatings designed to resist impacts and extreme war conditions. Step 3. Assembly of Parts One of the most delicate and spectacular moments arrives, the F-35 assembly. In the enormous hangars, large automated cranes lift and position the three major fuselage sections in their exact spot. Operators, supported by laser alignment systems, join each section as if it were mechanical surgery. There is no margin for error. If a single surface doesn't fit on its axis, the plane could suffer critical instability in mid-flight. Simultaneously, the wings are joined. Each one weighs over 20 tons and can withstand up to three times its own weight without deforming, even during maneuvers at over 9 G-forces. Once the ailerons, stabilizers, and movable surfaces are installed, the F-35 finally takes shape, outwardly looking like a combat aircraft, but inwardly still a technological skeleton about to receive its soul. Step 4. The Heart of the Aircraft With the structure completely assembled, it's time to install its engine, the Pratt & Whitney F-135, a monstrosity of engineering. It's a beast capable of generating more than 40,000 kilos of thrust, sufficient to take the fighter to nearly 2,000 kilometers per hour hour and even allow vertical takeoffs in its naval version. In the hangars, huge hydraulic cranes place the F-135 inside the aft fuselage, as if inserting the heart of a living organism. A single error here, such as a poorly connected valve, could cause an explosion in mid-flight. Next comes the aircraft's nervous system. More than 80 kilometers of wiring run through its interior, connecting sensors, flight controls, and electronic modules. This entire electrical network is protected with special casings that reduce its thermal signature, hiding the engine's heat from enemy radars. 
Finally, the digital brain is activated, transforming the aircraft into an autonomous combat machine. The great moment arrives, the first ignition. If everything responds as it should, the F-35 is officially alive. Step 5. Combat Systems and Armament Up to this point, the fighter jet has its shape, engine, and brain, but the most important thing is still missing, turning it into a real combat weapon. Unlike other combat aircraft, the F-35's armament travels hidden in internal compartments designed to open, fire, and close in seconds without compromising its invisibility. Here, air-to-air -air missiles, laser-guided bombs, and a 25mm rotary cannon are integrated. But the F-35 wins because it sees first. In this phase, its most advanced sensors are installed. Thermal cameras, infrared sensors, long-range radars, and electronic warfare systems that detect and neutralize threats even before the enemy knows it is being observed. All these systems merge into a digital network that projects a complete vision of the battlefield directly onto the pilot's helmet making it look like a video game where every decision is life or death. Once loaded, tested, and connected, the F-35 is a stealth platform for attack, defense, and surveillance. Step 6. Extreme Testing and Certification Before being delivered, each F-35 is taken to the test track, where it faces a brutal series of tests that push every system to the limit. First on the ground, where electrical failures, crosswind gusts, and powerful vibrations are simulated. Extreme weights are even placed on the wings to simulate the tension of real combat with a full armament load. If something fails, that fighter is disqualified. If everything responds as it should, then the big moment arrives. The first real flight. A test pilot subjects the plane to an aerial inferno. Tight turns, vertical climbs to over 15,000 meters, accelerations to break the sound barrier, and evasive maneuvers as if it were dodging real missiles. Only if the aircraft performs perfectly does it receive its final certification. At that instant, it officially becomes a Sky Hunter, ready to enter combat. Step 7. A delivery and Operational Deployment After passing the most extreme tests, the F-35 is ready to take its next big leap, officially entering military service. Military representatives and technicians from the purchasing country travel directly to the Lockheed Martin facilities in the United States. There, they inspect the aircraft, validate every system alongside the engineers, and supervise its final configuration. Each aircraft is customized in detail according to the client, from the combat software and sensors to the armament and communication protocols. No two units are identical. The buyer also chooses the version that best suits their operations, the F-35A for conventional runways, the F-35B with vertical takeoff capability, and the F-35C designed to operate from nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. And here is the most impactful fact. Each unit can cost more than $120 million. The complete program has already exceeded $60 billion just in development and engineering. This colossal investment explains why only a few world powers, such as the United States or Japan, have access to this aircraft. To conclude, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? Would you like to pilot one? Leave us your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next factory tour.